4.10 special bonding. For this lesson, please review 4.9, Lewis structures of covalent bonds, and please take out your reference tables as you'll be referring to table E, the periodic table, and table S throughout this lesson. Let's first start by talking about something called polyatomic ions. A polyatomic ion is an ion with many atoms. Think of polyatomic as uh, poly for many and atomic as atoms. So a polyatomic ion is an ion with many atoms, all right? Reference table E is where you can find a list of polyatomic ions. For example, H3O plus has um, four atoms, three atoms of H, one atom of O, and this stands for the hydronium um, ion. All right, there's a polyatomic ion because there's three hydrogen, one oxygen, and a charge of plus one. Same idea here, NH4 plus ammonium, one N, four H's, and charge of plus one. So these are all the polyatomic ions you can find in the table E. All right, now let's talk about something called ionic substances with polyatomic ions. Um, ionic substances with polyatomic ions means the following. Ionic substances with polyatomic ions have both covalent and ionic bonds, and let me tell you why. You'll find um, an ionic bond between the ions, plus and minus. So whatever the positive ion is and whatever negative ion is, they'll be attracted to each other and bond because of their charges. Remember, opposites, opposites attract, so the positive and negative attract, and that forms the ionic bond, because it forms between the positive and negatively charged ions because opposites attract, all right? Covalent bonds, on the other hand, are often between the nonmetals and the polyatomic ion. For example, you might have N and H together, something like that, or C and O together. So those nonmetals will form covalent bonds within the polyatomic ion itself. All right, so let's see an example of where we have both covalent and ionic bonds for ionic substances with polyatomic ions. All right, BaCO3. We can split this up into two ions. If you look on table E, you'll find that CO3 um, has a charge of two minus. That's a carbonate ion. So CO3 two minus is right here. BA2 plus, you can look up on the periodic table as has, having a charge of 2 plus for the top oxidation state of BA. All right, so we have a charge of 2 plus and CO3 2 minus. So since we have a charge of 2 plus and 2 minus, we know that the ionic bond is between the BA2 plus and the CO3 2 minus because they have opposite charges, they're oppositely charged ions, and therefore they attract in an ionic bond. I right, remember ionic bonds are between ions which are positive and negative. The covalent bonds, on the other hand, are between the C and the O in the um, polyatomic ion CO3 2 minus are carbonate. That's because C and O are both nonmetals, so they form um, covalent bonds. All right, for NH4Cl, on the other hand, we can look up on table E what NH4 is, and if we look up, we'll find that NH4 positive is ammonium. All right, so NH4 has a charge of positive one. Cl, Cl has a charge of negative one according to the periodic table because that's the ion it forms when um, it gains electrons, so it becomes Cl minus. NH4 positive, again, is ammonium on table E. All right, so since NH4 is a charge of positive one, Cl minus is a charge of negative one, you have an ionic bond between NH4 positive and Cl minus because one's positive, the NH4 is, and Cl minus is negative, so they're oppositely charged ions, positive and negative, and they attract each other because of their opposite charges. All right, the covalent bond, on the other hand, is between the N and the H in the polyatomic ion NH4 positive. And that's because N and H are both nonmetals, so they form a covalent bond. So remember, the covalent bond is between the nonmetals and the polyatomic ion, and the ionic bond is only between the positively charged and negatively charged ions, because they have opposite charges. All right, so keep this in mind throughout the lesson. And remember, table E, you can look back to find the charge of the polyatomic ions, and the periodic table you can use to find the charge of the metals and the nonmetals that are in the substance. Now let's talk about how to identify um, ionic substances with polyatomic ions. Here's a checklist to identify that you have an ionic substance with polyatomic ions. There are two questions here, and if you answer yes to both of these questions below, the substance definitely has both covalent and ionic bonds. All right, the first question is, is there a polyatomic ion from table E? The second question is, are there positive and negative ions from table E or the periodic table? All right. So um, those are the two questions you have to ask. Is there a polyatomic ion? And are there positive and negative ions from table E or the periodic table? All right, and the types of ions you can find are on table E and the periodic table are as follows. On table E, you can find the polyatomic ions, as I already went over. And the periodic table, you can find metal cations, which are positive, and non-metal anions, which are negative. All right, for example, really quickly, Li plus over here is a positively charged metal cation because it has a charge of plus one. On the other hand, um, O2 minus is negatively charged non-metal anion because there's a charge of negative two. All right, so those are examples of metal cations and non-metal anions. So let's go through three examples here of identifying ionic, ionic substances with polyatomic ions. 
NaHCO3. Let's first check our checklist. Is there a polyatomic ion? Yes, there is. The polyatomic ion is the bicarbonate ion HCO3 minus from table E. You can check that on your own. Question two, are there positive and negative ions? Yes, the one negative ion is HCO3 minus, which is the bicarbonate ion from table E, which you can check on your own. And the positive ion is the um, metal cation, which is Na plus, or the sodium ion from the periodic table. So we have a one positive ion, which is Na plus, and one negative ion, which is HCO3 minus. And we also have a polyatomic ion, which is bicarbonate, or HCO3 minus. Since we fulfill these criteria, we know that we have both ionic and covalent bonds. The ionic bond is between Na plus and HCO3 minus, since they have opposite charged ions. The covalent bonds are between HC and O and HCO3 minus because they're all nonmetals. For example, 2NH4Br, do we have a polyatomic ion? Yes, the polyatomic ion is ammonium, which is NH4 plus, which you can check on table E on your own. And question two, are there positive and negative ions from table E or the periodic table? Yes, there's one positive ion, which is NH4 plus, which is the ammonium ion from table E, which you can check on your own. And one negative ion, which is Br minus, or the bromide ion from the periodic table. Br carries a charge of negative one when it's an ion and compound. All right, and it is capable of forming ion a compound. So that's the negative ion, Br minus, and the positive ion is NH4 plus, and we have a polyatomic ion of NH4 plus, so we know there's that both conditions are fulfilled. Therefore, the, poly, the, the uh, two conditions that are fulfilled makes it so that we have ionic and covalent bonds. The ionic bond is between ammonium and bromide ions, and the covalent bonds are between N and H and NH4 plus. All right, and NH4... Uh, NO3, we have to do a checklist. Do we have a polyatomic ion? Yes, we actually have two polyatomic ions in this case, which is really interesting. We have an ammonium ion, which is NH4 positive from table E, and we have a nitro ion, which is NO3 minus from table E. All right, question two, are there positive and negative ions from table E or the periodic table? Yes, there's one positive ion, which is NH4 plus the ammonium ion from table E, and we also have one negative ion, which is NO3 minus or the nitro ion from table E. So since we have a negative ion of NO3 minus and a positive ion of NH4 plus, and we have polyatomic ions of NH4 plus and NO3 minus, we know that we have both ionic and covalent bonds. The ionic bonds are between the ammonium and nitrate ions because Ammonium is NH4 plus and the nitrate is NO3 minus, so they attract each other because they're oppositely charged. The covalent bonds are between the N and the H and NH4 positive because they're both nonmetals. And there are also covalent bonds between N and O and NO3 minus because they're oppositely, uh, sorry, because they're um, both nonmetals, so they form a covalent bond. All right, now let's try a sample problem using what we know. Um, we have to identify the types of bonds and explain our reasoning. In NH4 plus, we have to go through our checklist. Do we have at least one polyatomic ion? Yes, NH4 positive is from um, table E. That's a polyatomic ion. Do we have a positive and negative ion? Well, NH4 is positive, and F is actually uh, capable of forming a negative ion according to the periodic table as a charge of negative one. All right, so yes, we do have a positive, which is NH4 plus, and a negative, which is NH4 minus, and we have what polytime kind of NH4 plus, so we know it's ionic co and covalent. Uh, covalence between N and H and ammonium cation, NH4 plus, because they're both nonmetals, and the ionic is between the ammonium cation, NH4 plus, and the fluoride anion, F minus, because they're oppositely charged, so they attract each other. Okay, NO3, do we have at least one polyatomic ion? Yes. We have NO3 minus, the nitrate ion, all right, from table E, with the charge of negative one, if you check table E by yourself. And um, we also need to check, do we have positive and negative charges? Yes, we have a positively charged ion. Uh, sorry, if you actually look, K has a charge of positive one because it's a metal, so it's uh, capable of forming a positive ion. So yes, we do have a positive ion, K plus, potassium, and a negative anion, which is nitrate NO3 minus. And we also have a polyatomic ion of NO3 minus, so we know that's ionic and covalent. The covalence between N and O and nitrate ion, NO3 minus, because they're both nonmetals. And it's ionic between the potassium cation K plus and the nitrate anion NO3 minus. Same idea here. We have one, um, we have one polyatomic ion, SO4, 2 minus, and we have a positive ion as well, which is Ba2 plus, because it's a metal in the periodic table, so it's a charge of 2 plus, according to the periodic table. Ba is 2 plus. SO4 is three minus, uh, sorry, two minus. So we have, a po we have positive and negative ions and we also have a polyatomic ion of SO4, two minus. So we, we know it's ionic and covalent. Here we have um, two polyatomic ions, NH4 positive and OH minus. And we also know that there's one positive and one negative ion. So we know it's ionic and covalent. Covalent between N and H and ammonium cation, NH4 positive and between O and H and hydroxide ion and OH minus. And it's ionic between NH4 positive and OH minus because they're oppositely charged ions. All right, CH4, um, do we have a polyatomic ion? Nowhere do we ever see H4 or C or CH4, so no. 
So it's only going to be one of the two. It's going to be um, ionic or covalent. And it's polar covalent because it's a bond between two different nonmetals, C and H. No ion, so it's only one type of bond. AlCl3, do we have polyatomic ions? Nope. Nowhere do you see Cl3 or Al on table E. So therefore, it's only ionic because there's no polyatomic ions. It's ionic because you have a bond between a metal cation, Al3+, plus, and a nonmetal anion, Cl-. minus. All right, so it's metal cation, nonmetal anion, plus and minus gives you an ionic bond. CH3OH, um, do we have a polyatomic ion? OH minus, yes. Is CH3 positive? No, we don't see it on table E. We don't see it in the periodic table as ever having a positive charge. So therefore, it is only one type of bond because we don't have a positive ion. We only got the negative polyatomic ion OH minus. All right, so it, it's only one type of bond. It's covalent because it's a bond between C, H, and O, which are all nonmetals. So it's covalent. Even though OH minus is a polyatomic ion, CH3 is not listed in the table or the periodic table as an ion. Therefore, it can be concluded that it is covalent. All right. So just remember, in order for it to have ionic and covalent bonds, you have to at least have at least one polyatomic ion. And you have to have at least one positive or one negative ion. All right. Next, let's talk about Lewis structures really quickly. One bond is equivalent to two shared electrons. So if you see two shared electrons right here between the C and H, that's equivalent to one bond or one line. And think about it. A bond is usually between two people. So one dash or one bond in chemistry is shown here should equal two shared electrons like this. One line or bond is the same as two electrons. One bond equals one pair of electrons or two electrons like this. So the, this colon or these two dots and one dash or one bond count as, each count as two electrons. So um, one bond is equivalent to two shared electrons because a bond is between two people. So there are two dots. All right, just keep that in mind as we go through this next slide. Um, now we're gonna talk about something called um, multiple covalent bonds. All right, um, in multiple covalent bonds, they exist in covalent bond. Let's remember each line or each bond, which is like represented like this as a dash, equals two shared electrons or a colon. All right, and the two types of multiple covalent bonds we usually have are called double bonds and triple bonds. All right, in double bonds, two pairs of electrons are shared, which are um, two bonds or dashes, or in other words, four shared electrons. An example of this is oxygen. So we have four shared electrons, one, two, three, four. There's four shared electrons, and they're also represented as um, two pairs of electrons or two bonds, like this. Remember, um, each pair of electrons equals one bond. So this pair of electrons equals one bond or one line. E this pair of electrons equals one bond or one line. So we have four shared electrons or two bonds. All right, a triple bond has three pairs of electrons, so three pairs of electrons are shared. One, two, three pairs. And this is also six, pairs of six shared electrons because you have one, two, three, four, five, six that are pairing up. So you have six shared electrons and each one is represented as one line. These two rep are represented as one line, this, these two are represented as one line, these two are represented as one line. Since we have three pairs, we have three bonds or three lines. And we have six shared electrons because one line equals two electrons. Since we have two, elect uh, two electrons for each line and we have three lines, we do three times two or six shared electrons. Here we have two lines, so we do two times two or four shared electrons. I remember each line represents two shared electrons. So one, two lines equals four shared electrons. Here each um, line equals two shared electrons, so we have one, two, three, or six shared electrons. All right? There's another example, but you can do this on your own. Between C and N, you have one, two, three pairs, so we have three lines or six shared electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six is shown here in blue, green, and purple. For the sample problem, just remember that you have to count the number of lines to get the number of shared pairs or bonds. And then you have to multiply the number of shared pairs or bonds by two to get the number of shared electrons. All right, so for number one, we have to count it between the two carbon atoms only. The number of lines we have between two carbon atoms is two, so we know we have two shared pairs or bonds. All right, and the number of shared electrons is as follows. We know one line equals two shared electrons, so since we have two lines, we know we have four electrons. We multiply two times two to get four shared electrons. All right, for this one, we have to find it between the oxygen atoms only. We count two lines between the oxygen, so we know that we have two shared pairs or bonds. And then since we know one line equals two shared electrons, we know two lines would equal four shared electrons. So that's the number of shared electrons. All right, for number three, we have to count the number of lines in the mo whole molecule. So we count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 in the whole molecule. And we, so we know we have 11 shared pairs or 11 bonds. And since we know one line equals two shared electrons, we know 11 lines equals 22 shared electrons. So that's the number of shared electrons in the whole molecule. And two elements are capable of forming multiple bonds or nitrogen, which 
forms triple bonds or six shared electrons, and oxygen, which forms double bonds or four shared electrons. Please hang on.